Grace and peace to you for the one who is and who was and who is to come. Canadian scholar Marshall McLuhan once observed that the medium is the message. Among the many things this phrase can mean, one that jumps out at me today when we lift up and celebrate the ministry of Michael and all angels is the notion that the way information is delivered has a direct impact on how that information is received. Our word angel comes from the ancient Greek word for a messenger. In Hebrew, the language of the Old Testament, they also use the word messenger to describe these heavenly beings who populate God's court. So Michael and all the other angels we hear about in Scripture, most of whom are unnamed, are people or beings who deliver messages from God. But Scripture is full of times when God delivers a message to someone directly. God speaks to Adam and Eve in the garden. God talks to Abraham when he makes the covenant. God calls to Jesus and says, you are my beloved son. As Christians, we believe that Jesus' ministry, his life, his death, his resurrection, are a way God delivered the message of salvation to the whole world. And we also affirm the work of the Holy Spirit empowering the faithful to deliver messages. We see Peter and Stephen both do this in the book of Acts, for example. So if God can use a variety of media to deliver messages, what's important about it when the medium God chooses is angels? How do these heavenly messengers impact the way they deliver the message? Or to say it another way, how does this medium become the message? Maybe we can start by taking a look at some of the messages that angels, the heavenly messengers, deliver from God. When Abraham is about to kill Isaac, an angel appears to him and says, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay a hand on the boy. God changed the course of events in the world to save the one who would carry on God's promise of bringing blessing to that whole world. When Pharaoh refused to let God's people go, an angel struck down all the firstborn in Egypt but passed over the homes of the Israelites. As they fled from Egypt, an angel stood between the Egyptian army and the people to keep them safe. God changed the course of events in the world to save the people who would bring God's promise of blessing to the whole world. Generations later, an angel appeared to a carpenter in Bethlehem and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. In the same way, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. God changed the course of events in the world to prepare the way for the arrival of the Savior, for God to be born as a human being. An angel told the shepherds outside of Bethlehem, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. God changed the course of events in the world by being born into it as Jesus. And a lifetime later, early in the morning on the first day of the week, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. An angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. God changed the course of events in the world by shattering the one unquestionable truth that people had lived with since the beginning of time. If the medium is the message, the message of the angels, the heavenly beings who live in God's presence, shapes that message in a special way. Each time angels bring a message, it means God is stepping into the world, that God is reaching into creation and changing the course of events on earth so they serve God's mission of redeeming and restoring all that God has made. When angels are the medium, the message is that God doesn't create the world and then walk away. When angels are the medium, 
The message is that God is constantly stretching out those divine hands into the world and acting to redeem and restore what he's made. When angels are the medium, the message is that God is changing the course of events in the world so that they lead to life rather than death. The medium of sending a message through angels helps us when that message God is sending can be hard to make sense of. One of these messages is the vision from the prophet Daniel we heard this morning. He describes seeing the angel Michael, the protector of God's people, arise at a time of anguish, like nothing that's happened since the beginning of the world. An angel's appearance in the midst of such suffering would be a hard message to understand. But because the medium is the message, and the medium is an angel, we hear the message that even in these frightening visions, even in these terrible times, God steps into the world to change the course of events so they lead to redeeming and restoring God's creation. God is changing the course of the one event that happens with certainty for everyone in this vision. He says those who sleep in the dust, the dead, will awake, and the angel Michael will lead them out of death and into life. Because an angel brings this message, we know it means God is stepping into the world to change the course of events so they lead to life rather than death. In the same way, the book of Revelation is filled with messages that are hard to understand. But the prophet John, who wrote the book of Revelation, received all of his visions from an angel. In the vision we heard today, we meet Michael once again. And Michael leads a heavenly army to fight the dragon. That ancient serpent who's called the devil and the Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. Now, if we're used to picturing angels with halos and harps and wings, the thought of an angel leading an army is a little odd. But because the medium is the message, and the medium is an angel, we hear the message that this battle God is taking an active role and changing the course of events in means that it will lead to a victory for life and a defeat for death. The vision of Michael battling the dragon reveals that even the angels are victorious only because Jesus has already won his great victory on the cross. When the cross is the medium, it sends the message that no matter who we are, people or angels, we all draw our strength for our lives and our ministries from the same place, from Jesus' death and resurrection. This message means that even though we don't have the same abilities as angels, we can take cues from their ministry to guide our own. If the ministry of angels works on the idea that the medium is the message, then we should stop and ask ourselves what message we send by who we are as a medium for God's work. Is our presence a sign that God is stepping into creation and changing the course of events so that they lead to life rather than death. Our presence will be a sign of God's work in the world next weekend when we feed the hungry in Douglas Park. Our presence will be a sign of God's work when our youth care for creation volunteering at Lakeshore Pause later in October. Our presence is a sign of God's work each and every time we share the message that God has acted through Jesus to break all those powers that take life from creation. Each time our presence is a sign of God stepping into the world, when we as the medium become the message, we're joining in the ministry God has given to the angels. This means when we live out our faith, we're joining some, something much larger than ourselves, something much larger even than all of us put together. We're joining in that cosmic struggle the angels are already engaged in. A contest the angels already announced the outcome of when they sat at the empty tomb and said, He isn't here. He is risen. Canadian scholar Marshall McLuhan once observed that the medium is the message. Angels are the medium for messages God sends through the whole witness of Scripture and even in the lives of God's faithful people today. Each message is good news for God's people. But the good news for us today isn't any of those messages, but the medium, 
those messages come through. The good news for us today is in that medium, in the ministry of angels, God does not sit on the sidelines. Anytime an angel brings a message, it shows us that God is stepping into creation. God is stretching out those divine hands to change the course of events in the world so they lead to life rather than death. Each and every time we do the work of redeeming and restoring, we join in that ministry of the angels. Each and every time we share the good news of God's promises, we join in the ministry of the angels. And each and every time those angels lead us from death into life, we will join in singing praise to God in that ministry of angels that has no end. Thanks be to God.